Welcome back. So some of you might be thinking, this is nerdy stuff. Why do we use terminal? We don't want to use a terminal. We want to just use some kind of UI to get this done. And that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to use the terminal. It's definitely not a requirement to use the terminal. I just feel it's good to have your hands inside a terminal to understand some of the commands that we're actually doing behind the scenes. But okay, let's try and do the same thing now, but with the GitHub desktop client. That'll be more of a UI way of doing the exact same thing that we did in the last lessons. So let's start out by creating, I'm on the desktop client here, let me just make it full size. Here I can create a new repository with the plus up here. So I'll press create new repository, I'll just call it test, like we've done so many times before, and I'll just create a very local repository. Basic way, basic symbol, very easy to use. Great. Here we get some files out of the box. It builds two files for us called git attributes and git ignore. I will talk about these later, but just an overview, this guy is for managing different file types. How should we handle them? Like if we have um, a doc file, which is a word file, how would we merge those together? If we have a text file, how would we merge those together? I'll dig into details in a later more um, advanced version of this, but right now that's what it does. The other one, the git ignore file, it tells you what files do I want to keep locally, what files do I not want to share with other people by adding it to GitHub cloud solution. So it's files that we do not want to send to other people and the reason for that could be a lot of things. It could be uh, basic local files that we just want to compile locally, we don't want to send them to other people. It could be um, files that are binary files that could not be used on other machines, like if it's a Windows file, why send it to a Mac machine? Because it wouldn't be able to run it anyway, and stuff like that. So that's what the git ignore is for. That was just a basic for those. Uh, I'll get more into those. It's a cliffhanger, guys. I'll get more into it, don't worry. But how do we actually get this now? Because it's locally now. It's a local repository. How do we send this to GitHub? Do we have to go into the terminal now? No, 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 we don't have to. There's a small publish button right here in the corner. So you'll press that. Press the publish button. There we go. It'll ask me to log into my GitHub account. Okay, fair enough. Let me do that. That's my username. That's my password. Let's try and log in. So when I'm logged in, it asks me, what do you want the name for your new repository to be in the cloud solution? Remember, it would be like, in my case, Azuma slash some kind of name. And that name has to be unique. The last name. And right now, I destroyed the test folder, so I can call it that. Small description, Smurfy Mac Cheese. Something like that. You could put in a, more <laughs> a better description. And then it just asks me, do you want this to be a private repository? But I can't because I have to upgrade. Like I said earlier, if you want to use private repositories in GitHub, you have to pay for it. I don't want that. Let it be public so you guys can grab it as well. I'll publish. Boink. I'll give it a second. Just like before with all the commands we did previously, it'll automatically create this now in the cloud. So let's see if it's up there. I'll go into my GitHub account. I'll do a refresh of the page. And down here in my repositories, You'll now see a new guy popping up called test. If I go in there, you'll see these two are there. So now it's actually both a local repository and it's also available in the cloud solution. But I just did it now using pure UI. No stupid terminal commands, nothing like that. Just pure GitHub desktop client. I'll show you one more way and then we'll really start using this. See you in the next lesson.